Uh, you know, there's, I don't think there's, uh, unless you're just highly, highly organized and competent. Which, which I've never been accused of either one of those. But uh, I did, uh, I, I was thinking this morning, I did miss a couple of people that in the Tea Party movement that's really been a, a, a just go-to people. Up in North Texas in Collin County, uh, Mike Openshaw, he was here this morning. And, uh, and I had him on my list. I, in fact, I had two on my list and I just overlooked. I mean, it always happens. Mike Openshaw is a, is a great guy and a great Tea Party leader and has been involved in, in our movement for a long, long time. And he's, he's, uh, he got the Michael Quinn Sullivan Award. He, he's, yes. he walks around with a sword. <laughs> so that's great. Did Julie get, the, get one of those too, uh, Julie yeah, McCarty? Yeah. Well, anyway, Julie McCarty also, North Tex Northeast Tarrant County Tea Party. A great leader, great leader for uh, for what? I got one. Donna you got a sword? <laughs> Donna Rolander from uh, Rockwall. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, listen, that's that's fantastic. Yay. No, you don't. They don't just pass those out, Donna. Thank you for what you do. Rockwall Women's. Correct. Okay. And really, they, listen, those things are very, very important. Those are people in our movement that actually get out and, and, and that have been recognized for what they do. And, uh, and we're so proud. I'm also proud to have Terry Hill back here. Uh, she's, she takes Terry care Hall. of her highways. Terry Hall. Highways, Hall. Terry Hall. <laughs> to take highways and byways. She, uh, she sets fire under the legislature over there. They don't, they're kind of like Joanne. They don't like to see her coming. <laughs> so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, we want to start out. We want to get this this afternoon kicked off, and I don't know of another of a better way to build a fire than uh, yes, Maggie. Uh, Reed and Don Poe in Hood County are not with us because they're ill. She sent me a message. Okay. All right. Tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. And they they're also people that we can count on as well as as a guy named Michael Smith. Yes. He's not there. So uh, he's somewhere in spirit. He's here. He's around there he is right there you bet if you're looking for a Texan you got one uh, uh, but anyway listen we're going with our program we Joanne Fleming is a lady who she is one of the go-to's in Texas if you're looking for information if you're looking for encouragement if you're looking for somebody to go after you call Joanne and she can fill you in on all three of those so Joanne is an integral part of the Life, Liberty, and Property Tour. Whenever we were in the fight with uh, Lance Gooden and with Dr. Stuart Spitzer, we, we called Joanne. The Life, Liberty, and Property Tour showed up right in the middle of Lance Gooden's big, big uh, target. I mean, his, his base in Henderson County. And we flipped 1,100 votes in Henderson County. 1,100 votes. To get him in, okay. When Bob Hall, when Bob Hall was running against uh, Bob Duell, we the Life, Liberty, and Property Tour stuck their little team right in the middle of Greenville, Texas, yes. huh? Yes. Where Bob Duell is a is a doctor, <coughs> and we went in there. We didn't win. We didn't win Hunt County, but we won. Yes. The bottom line is he's gone. And the Life, Liberty, and Property Tour is part of that. Life, Liberty, and Property Tour, we helped Connie Burton. They helped all of us, all across the state of Texas. So we're very proud of Joanne for being a very, very uh, integral part of that program. Also, she is the leader of our Tea Party Caucus in Austin. She's another one of those that when she walks down the hall, it kind of shakes. So we're very, we're happy about that. And also, she is the leader of Grass, Tyler Grassroots America which is a, just a very fine program in, in Tyler, been uh, active for a long time. And, uh, and I know that uh, the state rep is down there is happy with Joanne and Grassroots Mayor because they do a super, super job. Joanne, if you will come and light them up, I'd sure appreciate it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ray. It's great to see everybody today, and I got one thing to say about all of us who were recognized as leaders. 
we couldn't do a thing that we do without all of you. Absolutely, could not do a thing we do without all of you. And um, I've been at this a long time. I was counting up the other day. I think I'm rolling over on my 23rd year of being a constitutional conservative activist in Texas. 23 years. Yeah. And sometimes when I look in the mirror, I'm going, sister, what happened to you? <laughs> well, you know what? These high maintenance elected officials. <laughs> It's like being pecked to death by a bunch of chickens, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, really. You know, you they run for office and they tell you that they're conservative. The packaging is conservative. But then, when they think you aren't looking, some of them decide they're going to be big government progressive Republicans. So when, Bright, when Breitbart, Texas, um, called me and asked me what my New Year's resolution was, I, without, you know, didn't have to ponder that long, I said, well, I'm going to do everything I can to fire, help fire as many big government Republicans from office as possible. Now, I think signing up to this group, you understand it, but you know, you go in certain to certain groups and you say that and they look at you like, you know, there's still the people drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> they think if there's an R behind the name, that's all we need to know. Well, we know better than that, don't we? Um, I'm going to, I think our team has handed out this sheet. We're going to talk about that in some detail, but I want to <clears throat> make a couple of distinctions here. Lately, I've had uh, several people approach me and say, don't you think the Tea Party needs to maybe rename <coughs> itself? Call itself a different label. No. <laughs> Short answer to that is no. Why would we do that? In the state, the state of Texas, in fact, there was an article, and I don't remember what the national publication was, but... Recently, there was a national publication that talked about how tea parties across the nation could learn a thing or three from the tea parties in Texas. We've been very, uh, we've been blessed to be very, very uh, successful in doing, in making a lot of uh, progress the last six point of seven years. And here's how we know that. Every time the Texas Tribune and UT do one of their polls and they profile voters, not registered voters, but likely voters. It comes back saying that one third of voters self identify as Democrats. One third self identify <coughs> as traditional Republicans. And one third self identify as liberty leaning Tea Party. That's limited government Republicans. Folks, that is amazing progress. Showing up like that because guess what? We've done that with virtually no money. I don't know any group that gets a big old fat check from the Koch brothers. Well, we're looking. Basically, <laughs> yeah, Dale says he's, he'll take that check. Um, you know, w w because we have done it uh, from, it's been a movement that has come from the ground up, and that's, that uh, provides a sustainability. And I'm going to congratulate you for what you've done because over this period of time, what is happening is that the grassroots Tea Party movement is framing the debate. We know that because statewide media, national media, call us to say, what do you think about this? I submit to you that if what we think wasn't important, they wouldn't be asking. <laughs> I'll give you another example. I was invited to be a panelist um, to discuss immigration on the Texas Public Policy Foundation's uh, immigration panel for their 13th annual policy orientation for the legislature last week. I was seated between two Republicans, one a senator and one a House member. 
our state rep couldn't couldn't be there, so it was it, it was incumbent upon me to present the conservative uh, position on illegal immigration on that panel. Uh, Matt Schaefer, Representative Schaefer, and his wife had just had their first child, so Matt couldn't be there. He had a very good excuse for not being there. But I will tell you that both of those officials who are not rated as conservatives by any of the statewide organizations were falling all over themselves to proclaim how much they agree with the Tea Party. <laughs> now this was a, a and it was a jam-packed room. I mean, it was full of people. And the room was probably about four times the size of this room. So they were so eager to first of all acknowledge Senator-elect Hall sitting in the second row. And I'm thinking to myself, my, 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 what a good old-fashioned rear-end kicking <laughs> in a primary will do to get the attention of some of these uh, big government Republicans. Now, because we believe uh, that people can recover from all manner of... Uh, uh, bad behavior, we believe in redemption, we believe that these big government Republicans perhaps have read the tea leaves, uh, have been converted and understand uh, well, how they need to govern this time. I'm certainly hoping that is the case and we will work with them on a case-by-case -case basis, but here's the deal. They've been elected to do a job. You know, we call the candidate vetting process a job interview. They are coming to you asking you for a job. And in my private sector career and when I was a county commissioner, I had this philosophy in mind. You need to hire slow. That means you do a really good job of figuring out if you've got the right person. You hire slow but you fire fast. Because if you don't fire that bad apple pretty fast, that bad apple can ruin a whole bunch of things that are going to cause you a lot of grief. Like, Gio, he's about to get a pension if we don't unseat him. He can't have that. You'll be correct, Morgan. You'll be absolutely correct. So, so if you're, let, let's just say that we have some folks that decide they're going to be all go along and get along and we're not going to be controversial this session and you've got somebody who's just been elected you better not be so married to that individual that you can't fire them if they come out C rated let me tell you there's no there's no going up from a C conservative rating if they start out a C you better get rid of them, you better fire them fast because there's no going up from that because if the lobbyists have an opportunity to get their hooks into them and spread a little that something something cash around, they're gone for good and they will be voting for big government. So when all this controversy in the media and among establishment Republicans, what is it that the grassroots Tea Party wants? What is it that they want? Well, we want them to start doing the things we've been talking about for probably 20 plus years. About limited government. I, I'm with Ted Cruz on this. Someday, we're going to get around to doing what we promised the American people we were going to do about limited government. Well, you know what? Someday is here. Because with an $18 trillion and climbing federal debt picture, with a Congress that appears to be, we hope they recover, but appears to be absolutely fine with saying the lawless actions of the president, we'll just take care of those in 2016. Friend, the rule of law is the only thing that separates the United States as a civilized, orderly society where the rule of law really means something and the chaos that's spinning out of control in Europe today. Yeah. They abandoned the rule of law long ago. 
They abandoned borders, many of them, long ago. And so now, since the media has been attacked, wow, we must have a problem going on. <laughs> well, I submit to you that you know everybody's focused on whether or not the First Amendment, whether or not free speech survives. I'm not concerned about free speech being attacked by ISIS. That, that is a problem. But a more immediate problem is right over there in the pink dome. There's an attack on free speech that is being mounted right now and driven by Republicans, big government Republicans, who really want all of us to just shut up and go away. And so, uh, it's, that's just not going to happen. Some of us are so dug in on this, and we've got so much time invested in it, that there is just no way we're backing down from that. Amen. Yeah. And and I will tell you that you all all have to get ready for you know a ton of disappointment. We elect imperfect people to go into a system that is um, just it's like it, it, you turn some of them loose and it's like they are swimming in a tank of sharks. I've already heard from some of our newly elected House members and senators. They've said, well, the old lions came to us and said, you know, the best thing for you to do is to just sit down and be quiet and watch right. us work right. this session. Just like that, huh? <laughs> you know, excuse me, we, I don't know any of us who worked our brains out going door to door and spending time and effort to get these people elected for them to go sit in a corner and sit down and shut up. Mm -hmm. The issue here is the state of Texas needs to be as strong as possible to lead a nation that is looking for answers. There is no reason that Texas shouldn't be the leader in the liberty movement. We can't do that if we continue to spend too much, borrow too much, and rely too much on the federal government. The fact that Texas is 11th in the nation in dependency on the federal government for federal funds to balance our state budget is, it, yes, it's disgusting and we need to, you know, we have to have a conversation in state government, and I submit to you in your local governments, you need to have a conversation about how and why we spend money. How and why we spend money. Government is supposed to have a very limited role. So therefore, every single piece of legislation that comes to a legislator should be viewed through the lens. Does it grow government? If it grows government, probably something they need to vote against. Mm -hmm. Because every time government grows, liberty recedes. So now where are we today? Well, we're, we are today a recognized movement in the state of Texas. The Texas uh, conservative movement is known in the nation. Okay? So how do we responsibly use that power and influence in the halls of the Capitol. <coughs> you have to continue to let your elected officials hear from you. Those that you've just elected, I submit to you, don't give them six weeks to get their sea legs. The minute you hear them say something crazy like, well, I think maybe we could compromise on this. <laughs> Uh, if it's one of those issues that is that involves a core defining principle, for example, expansion of Medicaid under Obamacare, there will be an effort mounted by Republicans once again to expand Medicaid under Obamacare. There was an article when I got back from Christmas 
I saw all these. I have Google alerts set up on our elected officials, many of them. So I see what they say when they say it, so I know when to hop on that. So when I saw that there had been this meeting where Governor-elect Abbott had allegedly said he was interested in looking at the Utah governor's compromise mm -hmm. on expansion of Medicaid, I went, oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> so what did I do? I shot off this very strong, very focused, very laser-like, we aren't having any of this to his policy advisor. And I'm going to tell you right now, we have to do that. With our, every one of our statewide leaders, they've been in public office long enough to know the difference <laughs> between big government programs, a big government approach to solving state problems, and a limited government approach. So they know better. So, you know, there's a time to be nice. All of the pre-inaugural um, interviews that some of us have done, I tried to be very nice and very helpful. But at the same time, I said there are certain things that the conservative movement simply not going to stand for. Another one of them, which I heard about this from that very fine young statesman who's going somewhere, Matt Renault. I was in a meeting with some legislators just before Christmas and we were talking about legislative priorities. And when I paused, <laughs> going over my list of squandered opportunities from the last session, Matt looked straight at me and he said, and I'll tell you another thing we got to do, we got to kill this idea of expanding pre-K to yes. four, three and four year olds. Yes. <laughs> he said it straight just like that. We have to kill it. See, and that is an idea that's been floating by Abbott's, being floated by Abbott's office. I'm going to tell you something right now. That is a statist approach to education. The next thing you know, they'll be pulling up, the state will be pulling up to the hospital to just take the bait. <laughs> so now, let's talk about... Um, what what happened in the last two sessions and, and, and I've told I've told every group of legislators I've sat before if you're expecting me or any grassroots <coughs> activists to be less passionate about getting these things done, you're gonna be wishing something that for something that will never be. Because these issues on this piece of paper that we handed out here. These issues are not some kook, right-wing, freako <laughs> ideas. These are conservative reforms that should have taken place in state government long ago. And when you look at the fact, and see I put up here the little <laughs> historical record, it's important going forward to know where you've been. And so when I sit in and I talk to legislators, I give them, them these statistics. In the 82nd Texas Legislature in 2011, we had 101 Republican House members out of 150. We didn't get any of this done. In the 83rd, we had 95 out of 150. And this session, we will have 98 GOP House members. So my question is, when is it going to be time to take care of some of these reforms? Now you will notice on the first line, I am talking about the need to fully protect religious liberty. Religious liberty is under assault in the state of Texas. And we need to stop that. What we saw in Houston is that that and in Plano that that is just the very beginning, and the bullies that are trying to push their agenda. There's only one way to take care of that. And in San Antonio. Yes, yes, indeed. There's only one way to take about to, to to handle that. 
first to pray about it and then go take them out. Because I'm going to tell you, Charlie Garen, I'll go ahead and say his name. Charlie Garen, Mr. Joe Strauss, Lieutenant, was very, very happy to go get in the face of Jonathan Sines of Texas Values when he killed the Religious Liberty Amendment in committee. He had the temerity to walk out of that committee hearing and get in Jonathan's face and say, Thank you for giving me an opportunity to kill that. Wow. Now, friends, if we're going to have a conversation about, I don't know, let's say anything, we're going to have a conversation about eminent domain. Well, we're going to have a conversation about uh, how we reform text God. Because we are going to Terry Hall, we are going to get text dot reform. Uh, <laughs> Those are important discussions. But when it comes to issues of religious liberty and life and traditional values, there can be no waiting on that. Amen. Because what these people are trying to do is unravel the fabric of our culture. Yes. Uh -huh. And once the fabric of a culture is unraveled, and people become demoralized. Mm -hmm. They do what? They hunker down and they go home and they hide out. Friends, if you go home and you hide out, the special interest that have no interest in constitutional government will take over. Because the chamber of crony capitalism that's alive and well in its influence over in the capital, they don't see these issues the way we do. They don't look at issues in terms of limited government and maximum liberty. They look at it, is it going to help me squash competition in my particular industry? Is it going to benefit me? We're in this not because we don't have other things to do. Oh my gosh, if you saw certain parts of my home, you would go, that woman is living in a refugee camp. <laughs> but I will tell you this, once you know your call to this, you can't not do it. Now see, I know Ann knows what I'm talking about. Because I'm going to tell you what, the Lord will put it so on you that you cannot sleep at night unless you're doing oh, it. Oh, God, tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. I was walking in the Capitol at 3 o'clock this morning. Yep. That's right. So angry. That's right. Well, you know, the thing about it, friends, is that if we are ever hoping to convince uh, our friends who are more, uh, I don't really have friends like this, so I'm kind of talking uh, out of place here. Because I, I, my friends are like you. Aww. My friends are all you. So I don't know people who care more about watching American Idol than they do about who's representing them. And these nitwits that they interview on TV that don't even know the name of the vice president, I mean, really? You see, I don't, I don't spend time with people like that. I, I really don't. So, so we have to be focused on making sure that no matter what happens tomorrow, that we're still there. And we're still raising a standard of liberty and righteousness. And Joanne... I know you can't go through all of these, but if we don't work on your very last one, American Law. Yes, ma'am. We, oh, yes. We're yes, going to have Paris. We're going to have yes, increased numbers of no-go zones and everything else. We have to really maybe take advantage of what's just happened and really, really push that. And, and you're correct about that, Mary. And, and these are not in any particular order of importance on here except for, I would say, number one. I put that number one because, you know, Grassroots America is known as the bulk of my work has been in policy, it's been in government reform, it's been in the budget. 
But, but I put this here because my friends and colleagues that are in the Life, Liberty, and Property Tour with us, like Concerned Women uh, for America of Texas, Miss Ann Hedinger back there, uh, with Texas Right to Life, like Eagle Forum, um, Jonathan Sines with Texas Values, uh, Michael Quinn Sullivan and I have committed to them. And we've told legislators, if you trash these issues, if you don't take up these issues and then you pass some modicum tax relief, guess what? You may not be looking for a gold star from us. <laughs> and see that, I will say one thing, the Life, Liberty, and Property Tour, the uniting of all the major conservative, longtime conservative groups in Texas, scares the day of lights out of the moderates over there, and they're going to do everything they can to shut us up. Now let's look at this list. Um, you will note uh, on here, let's see, where do I see it? Okay, under, uh, it's like one, two, three, four, fourth from the bottom, past campus carry and constitutional carry of firearms. Um, Matt Rinaldi um, said, Joanne, let's call it constitutional carry. And he has some very good reasons for calling it constitutional carry. And so that, so I don't want any of you all that be going, open carry, open carry. I don't want you to go, oh, she's abandoned open carry. No, constitutional carry takes care of that. Okay? All right. So um, with the plunge in oil prices, that's another thing to watch for here. Because I, I Matt Schaefer just sent me the... The forecast for oil and gas futures that they used for 2015, for 2016, and 2017. And he asked for them from three different, they gave us three different sources. I can tell you that they were all wildly overstated. Because you see, fracking is profitable, becomes unprofitable in most fields at $75 a barrel. In some fields in Texas at $53 a barrel, fracking is still uh, profitable. But we've got a downturn here that is impacted by a multitude of things, not the least of which is Saudi Arabia's uh, attempt to make sure that they squelch our oil and gas production. <laughs> Uh, and also Saudi Arabia's attempt to put Russia in its place. Because, see, for the Russian economy to stay viable and well, oil has to be at $107 a barrel. That's why you see people have, for weeks since before Christmas, people trying to cash in their rubles for any other kind of currency. So, we tried to tell the legislature when they were all giddy last session about, oh my gosh, we're going to have so much money. I mean, I had more than one of them say to me, Joanne, money's not going to be a problem. No. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not here asking you to spend a bunch of money. Now, so let me clarify for you. Spending all the money you can spend just because you have it is like, I mean, that's like a teenager's approach to government. Really? You're just, because you have it, you want to burn through it. So what you need to focus on is having a conversation down here about what state government would look like if we didn't get $69.70 billion from the federal government. See, that revenue represents about 35% of our, our biennium budget. Mm -hmm. What would it look like if that disappeared? How many in here think there's a there is a like there's a likelihood that the federal government is finally going to have a financial uh, reckoning moment and they will not be sending all that money? How many people? Okay, I think there's a likelihood of that too. So it is time now to have that conversation. Actually, it was time to have that during the 82nd session. And we blew right past that. And friends, we've blown past some easier exits off this highway. 
And every session that we don't get these government reforms done is going to make it harder on Texas. So now I hope you all are very, very focused on telling your elected officials that we need to get state government back inside a constitution-sized box. We need to focus state spending on those core functions of state government. And then in doing those core functions of state government, it needs to be done as efficiently as possible. And I have to tell you, Don Huffines idea of term limiting agency heads is a an idea whose time has way passed. I don't know how much you all have been paying attention to some of these runaway contracts we've got in this state. CT twenty one. What was that? Forty three million dollars? Uh, wasn't it? how much was it? It was a hundred and ten million total. Uh, okay, a hundred and ten million dollar contract that was not bid out. Now, I'm going to tell you, that was under HHS. And Dr. Kyle Janik. The better, that was a contract to, to weed out fraud and abuse. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> this, this was, to bring y'all up to date, this was a contract with a company to weed out waste, fraud, and abuse in Medicaid. Mm -hmm. However, this company had zero experience yep. in any of that. Mm -hmm. And that, that contract, was inked. That never went out to bid. So now that was in Health and Human Services. Dr. Kyle Janik is, is the Executive Director for HHS in the state of Texas. And Dr. Janik, probably a fine man to have a cup of coffee with. That's not what this is about. <laughs> he makes almost half a million dollars a year. I submit to you that a lot of the things that happen in that pink dome over there. Our business is on autopilot. We need a full-time governor, a full-time lieutenant governor, and we need a legislature that understands a, a, a simple principle of contract management. Now the people of Texas, pay, they, we uphold our end of the contract. We pay the taxes. And I submit to you that the people who pay the freight ought to have a lot to say about what happens. Thank you. So that, that's what this is about. So now, uh, Grassroots America will, uh, will probably next week, we will release our legislative priorities. As far as the Tea Party Caucus Advisory Committee is concerned, um, I have gotten the yes, and, and I haven't even talked to the members about it yet, but uh, Connie Burton, Senator-elect Burton, told me over the weekend that she'd be happy to be vice chair of the Tea Party Caucus because the Senate is supposed to have the vice chair role and the chair chairmanship on the Senate, on the legislative side mm -hmm. is to be a House member and it is Representative Alan Fletcher. He and I have been playing phone tag but we have pretty much know who the members are going to be and here's how that first meeting goes. We're here to help you. We're not here for you to get our minds right so we do and applaud what you say. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it works. We will never ask their permission to put out a press release. We will never ask their permission for any statement we make on policy. We are there to debate the issues with them and to try to move some of those people to the right. Now, the truth of the matter is that the most conservative members of the legislature will probably never come to those meetings. We work with them in a separate format, and they don't show up seeing the kind of girl that if I thought the establishment was running the thing and they were using my title, I'd be up in there going, you know what, this is what we're going to talk about today. I would debate them until I ran them out. I haven't, we haven't been able to convince our conservative House members to do that. Therefore, they don't believe when we're in those meetings that they can be direct 
with us because everything they say goes right back to, you know, the goon squad. <laughs> that will take political retribution. So I will tell you this, that there are going to be plenty of opportunities. Um, Ken Emanuelson and I have talked about it. Terry Hall and I have talked about it. Dale and I have talked about this. The need to have more conference calls, statewide conference calls with you all. Um, and so what I want you to be sure to do is to make sure that the person from your organization that you want on conference calls, you need to make sure that we know um, who that contact is for your organization so that when we put the word out through Ray, through John Twedell, through Dale, through Ken Emanuelson, through Grassroots America, you get that alert. We're going to try to use the conference calls to keep you up to date on what's actually going on down here. Because many of you can't be down here for several days at a time and don't want to be down here several days at a time. But we want to keep you up to date on what's going on. And so there will be times that we will feature a conference call that will be on transportation. We'll have Terry on. And we'll talk about, you know, what we believe about how the transportation um, bills are moving. Terry and I are going to try to identify tomorrow a foundation from which we can work this session on reforming transportation. Uh, we're going to talk to a transportation champion tomorrow uh, and try to find out, you know, what are the top three issues to focus on this session so that we can try to get a focus. I think everybody is looking for a focus because if you look at the whole, if you try to follow all of this, it will make you crazy and cranky. I would know that. <laughs> so what we're going to try to do is to, at least with the Tea Party Caucus, we're going to try, advisory committee, the, the citizen side of it, we're going to try very hard to have some subject matter assignments so that this certain person will follow this set of bills, say for example, on reform of HHS. Uh, somebody will be following maybe perhaps um, the uh, the gun uh, rights bills, those sorts of things, so that we can we can keep up with it. Now, I will tell you another thing we're going to do, and you're welcome to ask me. But there's a certain way that you need to go about asking me, and it is not sending me an email, because during the legislative session, I may get five thousand emails a week. I'm not kidding. I don't know how to be here and in meetings and keep up with email. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do an expanded job of providing written testimony to hearings. And written testimony is very important and can be as important to legislators as a physical presence. I was absolutely overrun with requests for written testimony for hearings, for example, for the tra transparency bills that the Republicans killed. Uh, but they, they want us to weigh in on those bills. So I, don't want, I want you to be down here to testify as often as you can, but you need to understand the game that's played. You may come down here for a committee hearing that's set for, I don't know, 11 a.m. Well, if, if they have, if it is a, a pretty controversial, as they call it, topic, there may be some things that happen on the floor that will delay that hearing and delay that hearing and delay that hearing and delay that hearing until you all go home. <laughs> or they may have the hearing at 2 in the morning. Most people aren't going to stay around that long. So please be aware that you can provide written testimony. We'll be doing that, and it is important for you all to, to keep up with the talking points, and your written testimony should be no more than one page. Okay? And one subject at a time. So anyway, Ray, I think that's it for me. If you guys have any questions or anything. Um, well, I have one. Oh, okay. Come in. Uh, well, all of you just said for, for me, the way I planted my standard with Scott Turner, yes. especially where Giovanni's concerned. Yes. 
Uh, he'll probably, well, first of all, Strauss is going to kick the legs out from underneath us, and I'll, we'll use that against these guys that vote for Strauss. But it's, in your opinion, Geo's record behind everything else behind that vote for Strauss may be a good record. But in my mind, and I want your opinion, that's, that's, that's reason enough to fire him. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. And, and, it, and it gets down to, because it gets down to this. Not only uh, Mr. Strauss, but also his lieutenants have a very liberal bent. I'll just say Byron Cook. Byron Cook is, I mean, he's for driver's licenses for illegals. He has, I mean, you know, he said more than one time he has a heart for illegals. I'm sorry, friends. You know, th there's a there's a room for compassion. It doesn't rest in the halls of government. You know, government's responsibility is to protect your life, liberty, and property, and to punish evil doers. The word charity does not appear in the United States Constitution, but you can find it many places in the Holy Scripture. And so, you know. If I could spend another time talking about the wide open border. See, they only a lot of them only care about it when the media cares about it. But I'm going to tell you, the people that led the assaults in Australia and in Paris, they are here. They are here. Law enforcement will tell you they know for sure they are here. And in talking to most elected officials, there is no sense of urgency whatsoever to keep one more from crossing that wide open border. So we have to stay on, friends. We just do. Okay? Thank you all so much. I want you to know that that this young lady right here is uh, means everything she says. If she didn't say, if she said it, she means it. You can you, you can write it down. Um, I don't know. We I think we're scheduled for you guys like at two thirty. Is that right? Have, have y'all said yeah? I think some of them are coming over at two thirty. I came a little early. Good. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Let let let. We've been talking about the state legislature ever since we opened this meeting this morning and uh, what's going on in the state of Texas. And then, and Joanne said uh, a minute ago, am I enough? Can we use that to go get them? Okay? All right. Let me, let me just, uh, and it's going to be kind of hard for me to read, and I don't like to just read to people, but you've got to hear this because this is relevant. The Coleman County Tea Party Steering Committee voted to remove Congressman Henderling, Con Congressman Henderling from all future voter guides, block walking, fundraising, and general campaign activities in the future. We're asking for your T teams, your Tea Party teams, and your GOP units to join with us in this commitment. It is about time that we stood up for what we what we are going to support, or what, and is, wait a minute, it's about time we stand up and say that we will not support these servants who turn their back on the people. Congressman Hensherling, he's our congressman, Senator, uh, Congress, uh, Congressional District 5. Congressman, congressman Hensherling made a conservative commitment to his team. Many of us serve, have served with him, gave him his, our trusted vote, time, and money and his voting record remains above average. His first commitment is to the establishment leadership. His statement concerning his support for John Boehner was basically, I made a commitment to the speaker in November. That would, uh, that would go with the House selection, not the selection of his constituents. Okay. With uh, We suppose that the speaker has made a commitment, a committee commitment to Jeb. And we feel like this, this appointment serves our congressman to the greater value than the people at home. We feel like that it is time to come to start 
the vetting process to find a trusted replacement. Yeah. Uh, that was a rough draft of an email that I sent to my steering committee and a few trusted people around the state knowing that it would get back to Hensherling. <laughs> It took him 30 minutes to call. <laughs> we have a meeting with him on the 23rd of this month. And we said, at our place, you come to us. You work for us. That's the way we do Don't tell me that you can't make a difference. Yeah, we gotta shoot the, we got to shoot those shells across the bow. We really do. And if we don't do it, if we just lay back and say, ah, we can't do anything, that's what we're going to get. We're not going to get a thing. So let's all think about that. You do make a difference. You can call your congressman. You can call your legislator, your senator. You can move them. You can, you, and, you know, they don't, they don't like to deal with people like us. Well, you know, Ray, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously thinking, I, it's probably a long shot, before, especially those of us that live in the county where we passed a resolution instructing our delegation to Austin that we wanted to vote for someone other than Strauss. To me, that's grounds for a resolution of censure at our, at our, in our executive committee meetings. Yeah. Right. Correct. Right. Well, you know what? It, it's, uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate having a conservative legislature that I, a, a, a group like I, right here, these guys, these guys and girls right here, that 32. We built that. We're the one that built that. that. <laughs> and Joanne is talking about these guys up in here and that, that group right there, that 33, that 33 R's are hardcore Democrats. Mm -hmm. Bless them. Huh? They need to be flushed out. You know, when you, you add that 33 to that 52, we went through that this morning. It's important. That we know that, Matt. That we know what's going on here. And that we that we know who these people are. And we're coming. We're not just laying around. Now, I don't know. I've got a statement I want to make before the legislators get here, but I want them to be here when I make it. <laughs> I want them to hear it. So, are they coming in back there at all? All right. Drug here. Right, you want us up there? Uh, yeah, come on, right, right up here. And if you will, text Matt Rinaldi. And uh, there's John. Good deal. Hey, man. Hey, buddy. Thank right. you for being here. You bet. Hey, how are you? Appreciate it. You bet. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes. Uh, well, I read, I read the first one. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yes. It's hot in here. Well, I tell you what I've got. What I've got here. <coughs> what about Molly? Did y'all see her by any chance? Molly what? Okay. Well, it might mean something. Um,